Hey again, everybody. Um, okay. This is TC again with uh, how to make Beast Girl ears. If you remember from the last video, we made the under structure and we put the wire frame in there for each ear. And now what I'm going to show you is how to cover the fabric. Cover the ears with fabric. <laughs> um, depending on what your ears, like what kind of creature you're um, doing ears for, you can pretty much use any kind of skin or fur kind of material. This would be a leather, um, like a scaly leather if you wanted to do a reptilian beast girl. And we have fluffy furry ears like my um, my Nikki cosplay. And we have a velvety texture um, for just a brown, like kind of fine fur on the ears. And this is what I'm going to be using for my character. And so what you want to do is get your pattern. And we're going to cut off a nice chunk. Excuse me, baby, it's all that. Okay, just be right there. Be cute. Um, all right, we're going to cut off a nice chunk. So if I'm real. Right about here. Start there. And there. Fair take. Now this is the side of the fabric that's going to show. <coughs> Cutting, oh my god, this is probably the worst noise that ever can make when you're cutting it. I cannot stand this noise. Oh, I can't wait till this is over. Okay, there we go. And that's all I need for that. I actually got this as a remnant. I got a 75% discount because it had these weird spots on it. Not sure what the heck this is. This is a fairly thick velvet. It's I think it's more upholstery grade than fashion grade, so it's kinda heavy. But I don't mind that. Because this would not be the first time I've used a heavy fabric and it was the only one that I found that worked out. Now when you're Putting down a pattern for something with a nap, and a nap is pretty much the way that the texture flows. Um, velvet has a nap, fur has a nap, uh, anything kind of shaggy, but comes to mind velvet and fur. Um, you want to put your pattern down so that the fur flows in the direction, or the nap flows in the direction that looks nice. You don't want to have ears that hang down with the fur flowing up because if you look at a pet, if you have a pet, they're, oh where are my Nikki ears? Wish I could grab a cat but they're sleeping. Uh, most animals that have fuzzy ears, they're fur flows to outward from the base of the ear to the tip of their ear. So it makes it nice to pet their ears. Um, the same thing goes for fur on the inside. So that's how you want your fur to flow. So you always want to trace on the inside, on the wrong side of the fabric. If I were to do the patterning for this ear, 
I would not want to lay the pattern down because this is the top. I should mark that on there too. I know that really would. If you're going to reuse a pattern, it's good to mark stuff like that. It's a one-off. It almost doesn't matter. But this is the top of the ear. This is the bottom. And this is the outside. So you want the fur to go that way. So you wouldn't even lay it down like this. This is the... Um, the grain of the fabric. This is a knit, so it's kind of, you know, not very really stretchy. It's a stable knit. Okay. I'm rambling about fabric. <laughs> anyway. That's not really the direction you want this fur to flow. You want it to f flow towards the tip of the ear, so you kind of lay it down at an angle. And that way it pets very nicely. But we're not using fur. So let me put these pins back. Completely unprepared for this. <laughs> okay, well like half prepared for this. Yeah, that's together, right? And I legitimately lost the pins on it's probably on the island board, I'm not gonna worry about it as long as it's not here. Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to whip out the old sewing machine, or I'm going to, and we're going to sew along this edge and that edge. So I'm going to stop filming now because it's boring to watch me use a sewing machine and I got to change thread colors and all that good stuff. And then I'll be back when I'm done. right now we're done with the sewing machine normally my sewing machine remains well oiled except I've been working all weekend so <clears throat> I've been having to oil it more frequently so we're done sewing the top and bottom edges of the ear and top and bottom meaning you know this being a rough shape of a triangle the long, the long edges, the side facing your head, or that will be facing your head, you want to leave open because other than that, how are you going to flip it inside out? So, now comes the flip it inside out part. Hi, back hat. There, we're going to flip our lovely ear skin pocket thingy inside out. So jam that in there as far as it'll go. Okay, you hold this, except not like that. Hold it like this. Just sit still. And stop sticking your tongue out as rude. Alright. You should have plenty of room in here. If you don't, um, jam it in there some more. No, I'm just kidding. Um, pull it out a little teensy bit and trim, and let me see, yeah this one's fine too, I think I might have to jam it in there, yeah just a little bit more, go, go in there, and, I don't think that's about, no, no, I'm going a little further. Okay. 
So, of course, we're going to hand sew this part. You're going to remember this is the front part of your ear. You're going to fold your seam allowance or, and pulling it tight is okay. You're going to fold your seam allowance around there and then you're going to slip stitch this closed. You, you probably want to pin it or something. Let's get some pins. Trusty magnetic pin cushion, for, which for some reason always attracts pins to the bottom. There we go. If you do not know how to slip stitch, there are several nifty tutorials. Let's hope I don't jam this directly into my thumb. Done it before. Pins under the thumbnail. No fun. <laughs> Rage inducing. Okay, let me pull back some. Yeah, there we go. Alright. So, um, yes. These are the difficult parts, so I like to do them first just to get them out of the way. Oh, fudge. Now, if you happen to not have enough seam allowance, that has also happened to me before, um, you can always hot glue this shut or just whip stitch it shut without folding it under. Because if you're doing this right, well, if you're doing a, an average beast girl, beast girls usually have shaggy hair. So you have lots of hair. Looking at the camera, nobody sees me <laughs> nodding. But um, you're going to have lots of shaggy hair to hide your tiny mistakes under. So it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty on the edge facing your hair. And which side is this? This is the front because I feel the wire. Back here, you don't really feel it. You kind of got the seam allowance back here which feels different from the wire. So this is your lovely ear. If you want a nice preview, be careful of the pins. You see that? What a lovely ear. Entirely too big for this baby. And so I'm gonna, whoops, wrong side. Do the same thing over here, which should not take very long. And then we sew it shut. And in the, so, um, to go over what we've covered, literally, we have covered our ears with our lovely fabrics. Oh, whoops. This side first. And <coughs> close them. In the next video, oh come on you, we're going to attach these to your headband. Well, we're going to pair them with the wig and attach them to the headband. And I can't talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> so I'll see you next video.